Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again, it's time for the Q&A, so let's go ahead and get this started. All right, first question. Can you speak about NSAIDs? There are conflicting studies on their effects on training adaptations. What are your thoughts? Uh, this is one of those areas, if you guys kind of see my response below, where I just simply do not have an answer. Uh, and I don't think anyone has an answer. I have tried to cover this a couple times over the years. Okay, I've tried to cover this a couple times over the years. I've tried to stay current on the evidence on it, and I finally gave up. Uh, and I haven't talked about this one in a long time. Uh, and I've discussed this in the past in Q&As and stuff many years ago. We've gone through periods of time to where there were studies that shows that uh, NSAIDs, and these are basically over-the-counter painkillers like your Tylenol and stuff, can negatively impact training response. There are others that showed that it didn't. And the data has gone back and forth. Okay, it's gone back and forth. And depending upon what year we're in, the study suggests one thing or they suggest another. Uh, th this is a case of where the science is just not in agreement. We don't have any sort of real consensus. And therefore, we can't even draw any real conclusions. We can't even look at our anecdote because none of you out there are saying, oh yeah, I took Tylenol for a while and I didn't make any gains, right? Well, it doesn't work like that. You're not going to be able to draw it from that single instance. Uh, there is data that basically at this point that suggests that it may interfere. We don't know how much. So I guess the take home here is like with everything else in health and fitness, don't use any drugs that are not necessary. Right? Don't take any substances that are not necessary. Now, necessary is a relative term. Maybe you have goals that require you to take substances because your goals are so extreme. Okay, fair enough for a whole lot of people in the training world. Uh, maybe you have something that you need for medical reasons. Okay, by all means. By all means, then, then do so. If your doctor is prescribing something for your health, it's probably a good idea to take it. I'm not going to sit here and second guess your, your medical doctor. Okay, not my place. But let's come over to the point. If you're ingesting or putting any drug into your body that isn't necessary, just accept that it might be compromising your progress. Okay? So that's the question you need to ask yourself with this. Of, do you need these insets? Is it something you can resolve with other stuff you're doing? Are you getting headaches because you're dehydrated? Are you getting a lot of joint and tendon pain because your training programming is bad? Like what's going on that makes you need these things? and find a way to, to minimize your intake of them. Don't, don't just take something every time you get a mild headache. Assess your level of need for these things and, and, and weigh it all out. Of any substance that we're putting into our body may interfere with recovery. Okay? Because they have a, a lot of impacts on the body. Just be aware of that and say, okay, do I really need this or not? Particularly when it's not something that your doctor has told you that you need. And I think that's, that's the only pragmatic uh, approach we can take with something like this. All right, next question. Have you noticed if safety squat bar squats is less heavy and stressful on your spine than the back squat? Uh, which safety bar do you use? Is buying an attachment to take to the gym just as good as buying the whole safety bar? Which attachment is best? Uh, I, I don't, I've never messed with barbell attachments of any type. I cannot make recommendations on those. I generally have never been impressed. So when you, you've never seen me advocate or use an attachment, I, I certainly don't know which is best. Uh, it's, and as far as what safety squat bars, um, I have the TDS. I don't know that I'd recommend it. I haven't been overly happy with mine. So if you ask me which one do I use, it's like, well, I bought one a long time ago. And, you know, all things considered, I find that they're fairly hard to research. I know that mine gives me headaches, really bad headaches. So let's come back over. Is it less heavy? Is it, like, the thing that you need to be asking is stressful in a good or bad way. We have to stress our spine. We have to stress our spine. 
we want to stress our spine. It's a question of how much stress can we get away with in a training week. Uh, safety squat bars. They require more back involvement. More upper back is required. Is that part of the spine? Do we count that as taxing the spine? We could argue there's probably less axial loading with a safety squat bar. Why? Because we use less weight. Right? Most of us can't use as much weight. So is it less heavy? Generally, yeah, for the same RPE. Here's the thing to factor in, though. The same studies, and this is, this is what's been interesting, and I know guys like Greg Knuckles will say, well, I still like the SSB, and I, I recommend it. But the studies on it do tend to show it uses more trap and things like that. But it does seem to activate a little bit less lower body. So the question becomes, yeah, it's less heavy, but is it giving us the same level of activation? Maybe not. Not on a rep per set, set per set and rep per rep basis. So in which case, you might need more volume. So it kind of comes back over to that point of, could you probably get away with a little more volume on it? In theory, because of less axial loading, because we're all weaker at it but you will need it to get the same development. The other issue we come to is the level of discomfort involved with this exercise. Okay. Safety squats can tend to be very, very uncomfortable. All right, that can interfere with your recovery just as much as the axial loading. So, you know, we, we get into this, this conflict regarding that. Um, do I think safety squats are good? Yes. Do I think they're useful? Yes. Okay. I think this is a useful barbell and a lot of people benefit from it. So I, I actually am a fan of using it. I have a lot of clients who use them at their gym or who own one. I hate using mine. But here's the thing. It's like any other tool. You're hopefully not using it exclusively. Right? You work it into your conjugate system like everything else. You could do waves of your speed work with it. You could do some of your maxes with it, okay? But obviously, this isn't the tool you want to use exclusively, right? You want to squat with other bars. It's just one of the many tools in your toolbox. It's not better or worse than another bar. It's just a different training tool. All right, next question. How might someone program power cleans into a non-conjugate four-day split, like with heavy days in the beginning of the week and lighter days at the end of the week, but not the MEDE template? Okay, kind of notice my response here, and this is why all, and I mean literally all programming questions, have to be in the context of the program you're running. And that's the reason I took this question, uh, because it, it kind of brings home a message. If you know that I coach conjugate, I do conjugate myself, it's what I coach for my clients. 90% of my clients run conjugate. Everyone else is on linear programming. Now, there are reasons why people are doing the latter. Usually their level of advancement and lack of equipment. That, that's usually why. So, Let's come over to your question. You're like, how do I program this in a non-conjugate? But you didn't specify, you didn't specify the exact full programming style that you are using. Therefore, there is no answer. Okay? All programming questions are in the context of the program. There is no, hey, if I'm just running and you like with heavy days in the beginning of the weekend like that, that's doesn't tell me anything about it. Like if you tell me you're running conjugate, I have some idea of what you're doing. If you tell me you're doing 531, we have some idea of what you're doing. Okay? Why is that important? Because if you are having to ask programming questions, you're not qualified to write your own program. Okay, if you're having to come to a YouTuber or your favorite internet personality or coach and ask them how to program something, you don't know enough about programming to write your own system. You need to be running a proven system until you learn how to program, and then if you want to deviate and write your own, that's fine. But we kind of come to that point of you shouldn't need to ask somebody then. You either know how to program or you don't. 
and looking at a lift like this outside of the context of the entirety of the training program, you're not going to get an answer. Now, if you were to ask me how it, how it, we do power cleans on conjugate, uh, I'd probably throw them into dynamic effort lower day. You could do them with lightweight also on, on maybe your GPP days. That's where you program them in. You could you throw them into your speed work. You do them after your speed squats and pulls if you needed the power clean. Right? You do a bunch of triples with them. You do eight or ten triples. Right? Easy enough. But that's inside of the context of this programming. And if you're doing them for Olympic lifting, you probably need to be consulting an Olympic lifting coach and follow their templates and programming. Okay. And I want people to understand that. If you were having to ask other people how to program, you really shouldn't be writing your own. And it sounds like in this case, I'm just going to write my own program up. What do you think your success rate is going to be? You may be wasting a lot of time. Right? You may be wasting a whole lot of your own time trying to do something that you're not qualified to do for yourself. And I don't think that's a good idea. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time in part two.